Welcome back to Fictional History 101. I'm your professor of fictional history, Professor Johnson. We're continuing our coursework on Mobile Suit Gundam, specifically the Grips Conflict. Today's lecture will be entirely focused on Zeta Gundam. In our last class, we had talked about the personalities and histories of two major figures in the Universal Century, Amuro Ray and Shar Aznable. Their experiences and personalities would tie into the escalation of the Grips conflict, as well as a shift in support within the Earth sphere. For today's class, we'll be going a little deeper into the Grips conflict. We'll cover three important topics the escalation of the Titan's tactics, the introduction of Axis as a major player in the Earth sphere, as well as the Ayug's rising support. When we last discussed the Grips conflict, the AU had launched a daring assault on the Earth Federation base at Jabrao. The intention was to force a quick end to the conflict by capturing the Earth Federation leadership, just as Zeon had attempted during the One Year War. However, the Titans had abandoned this base and planned to use it to lure the AU into a trap. Now, many of the AU's pilots and mobile suits were stranded on Earth. Seeing an opportunity to eliminate the separated AU forces, the Titans began to pursue the scattered forces retreating from the South American base. This fleeing force would include the ace pilots Camille Bidon and Quattro Bagina, and would serve as a serious blow to the AUG's fighting strength if they were eliminated. The Titans knew this and spared nothing. They deployed cutting edge mobile suits such as the Gaplant and Ashamar, as well as newly developed cyber new types in their pursuit force. After the failed assault on Jabrao, Amuro Ray heard of the AU Karaba forces stranded on Earth. While he'd been content to ride out the post-one-year war period in peace, a meeting between himself and one of the crew members from the White Base encouraged him to join in the Grips conflict. Resolving to escape from the confinement of the Titans and the Earth Federation, Amuro stole a plane and headed to assist the escaping forces. He would rendezvous with the AU and Karaba forces and join up with them during a battle even going so far as to crash his plane into a Titan mobile suit. He would survive the crash and was rescued by AU forces. I think it's interesting to note that this would be the first time Shar, disguised as Quattro, and Amuro would meet since the One Year War. The two shared few words during their trip together, though Shar was more optimistic about Amuro joining the fight than Amuro was with Shar being a part of the AU. The plan at this point was for the AUG forces to return to space via the Karaba-controlled Pacific Coast spaceport, which was situated near San Francisco. Upon arriving at the spaceport, the anti-Earth forces fell under attack from the Titans. While the group was able to return several mobile suits and pilots to space, others were killed during the Titan assault on the spaceport. Amuro, Camille, and the Karaba forces would be left on Earth, as Camille was unable to escape during the fighting. Quattro returned to space and went to meet with Blex Forer, the head of the AUG. Their plan was to take Blex to the Earth Federation capital at Dakar and speak to the General Assembly to reveal the atrocities committed by the Titans. However, to do this, they would need to reassemble their forces. On Earth, Camille, Amuro, and the Karaba forces were still fleeing from the Titans. They moved to Hong Kong, hoping to resupply. However, the Titans would find them there as well. They would deploy their newest mobile armor, the Psycho Gundam. The Psycho Gundam was developed based on much of the new type research done during the One Year War. It combined design elements of both Federation and Xeon, with a combination of a Minofsky craft system, an eye field, and a number of mega beam weapons scattered throughout the armor. At 40 meters tall, it easily stood twice as tall as other mobile suits. The Titans deployed the Psycho Gundam and its cyber new type pilot into Hong Kong in the hopes of destroying the AU forces. With the number of mega beam weapons on the mobile armor, it was a devastating weapon to bring into the city. The AU sorted its forces and appeared to drive off the Psycho Gundam. However, it was only withdrawn due to the instability of its cyber new type pilot, 4 Murasame. Camille and 4 would encounter each other within the city and form a near-instant attraction to one another. However, this would be complicated when the two realized each other's identities. While the two would fight again, with Four using the Psycho Gundam to attack the Karaba Ayug team, Camille would fight against her. 
During the battle, he managed to speak to her for a short time, and after this, Four decided to help Camille return to space. She stole a booster rocket from the pursuing Titan's ship, and even covered Camille as he returned to space using the rocket. Camille would shortly thereafter rejoin the crew of the Argama. At this time, the Titans had began to prepare for an assault on the lunar city of Von Braun City. This operation was codenamed Operation Apollo. While Jamaican's forces would move towards the moon, Paptimus would take the Dogos Gyar, as well as some newly developed mobile suits, to train his pilots. At the same time, the Argama would receive a new prototype mobile suit, the Zeta Gundam, as well as other upgraded weapons platforms and mobile suits. The Zeta Gundam would prove a vast upgrade from the Gundam Mark II, and the other weapons and mobile suits would increase the abilities of the Argama to engage the Titans. While receiving the weapons, the Argama would encounter the Dogos Gyar in its mobile suits. Neither side would take significant losses before breaking off from the fighting. However, after encountering the Dogos Gyar, the Aeid believed an attack on Von Braun's city was imminent. With Operation Apollo discovered, both the Argama and the Radish moved to engage the Titan's forces heading to Von Braun City. While some members of the AU wanted Quattro to join Blex on his journey to Earth, he remained in space to assist in the defense of Von Braun City. The Titan's forces were made up of Shiraco's Dogos Gyar and Jamaican's Alexandria, as well as a number of smaller capital ships. Their plan was to have a conventional attack on the city, using the Dogos Gyar as cover for the rest of the fleet. However, Shiraco moved ahead of the fleet, taking the Dogos Gyar into close proximity of the city and leaving the rest of the Titan's forces behind. At this point, they deployed their mobile suits and caught the AU between both sides of the Titan's fleet. With Shiraco's ship so close to the city, the AU would not be able to counterattack for fear of destroying the city, and the Dogos Gyar would be able to hold the city itself hostage using its megaparticle beam cannons. This would force the AU to retreat. Although Shiraco would capture the city, he would turn responsibility for it over to Jamaican. It's difficult to say if Shiraco's earlier training maneuver was a real effort to train his pilots, or if he had planned to tip off the Ayug as to the Titan's movements. It can be argued that this was his intention, as the Ayug forces holding up Jamaican would allow him to move ahead with his alterations to Operation Apollo and secure more glory for himself. The Ayug forces headed to Granada to regroup and prepare to retake the city. With the Ayug forces concentrated, Jamaican planned to take an empty colony from side 4 and drop it on Granada. He had hoped to eliminate the bulk of the Ayug fighting forces, as well as eliminate one of their bases of support. After Operation Apollo, Quattro had gone to Earth to meet with Blex 4 at the capital city of Dakar. However, the Titans had deployed their own agents to Dakar. These agents would assassinate Blex 4 in his hotel room. Quattro arrived as Blex was dying, and with his last breath, Blex asked Quattro to become the leader of the Ayug, and revealed he knew Quattro's identity as Shar Aznable. Shortly after Blex's death, the Earth Assembly would vote to grant the Titans control over the Earth Federation government. In space, Shiraco was working to undermine elements of the Titans and the Earth Federation. Shiraco had sent a pilot to the Ayug forces to warn them of the impending colony drop. He hoped to draw the AU forces to Jamaican and have his forces defeated. Fresh from his victory at Von Braun City, Shiraco's gallantry would look all the more impressive against Jamaican's failed operation. With the AU forces deployed against them, the Titans would be unable to guide the empty colony to Granada and had to abandon the operation. The AU forces would continue to engage with Jamaican and the Titans forces after the operation. This would lead to Jamaican dying after the bridge of the Alexandria was struck by a beam fired during the battle. There's some debate if it was a stray shot from the Ayug forces or from a disgruntled pilot under the Titan's command, but we'll cover that in more detail in a later class about the Titans. With Granada safe for the time being, the Ayug deployed the Argama and the Radish to Earth. They planned to pick up both Quattro and Blex Four, as they did not know he'd been killed on Earth. The Alexandria received emergency repairs and began its pursuit of the AU ships. Near the Earth, the Alexandria would catch up to the AU. With a sneak attack from a mobile suit carried Mega Beam Cannon, they planned to destroy the shuttle returning from Earth and hopefully eliminate the remaining AU leadership. 
Interference from the AU mobile suit teams meant this operation failed as well. With Quattro back aboard the Argama, the AU began to plan their moves against the Titans. The AU planned to send a spy to the Jupitris to see what information they could unearth about this mysterious man from Jupiter and his vessel. While they'd be able to infiltrate the Jupitris, the spy they sent would develop sympathies towards Shirako and revealed little new information to the Ayug. Shortly after this operation, the Titans moved to assault the Ayug friendly side 2. They planned to end the war with the Ayug by deploying nerve gas against a side 2 colony. The Titans hoped to cow the Ayug into submission with a show of their willingness to do anything to win the conflict. While the colony would attempt to surrender to the Titans, this would be ignored by the Alexandria. The repaired Alexandria moved to Gas Colony 25. However, the Ayug would succeed in disrupting this operation. With the Titans using more dangerous methods and weapons, the Ayug found themselves in need of more allies. They planned to reach out to the Xeon remnants at Axis. Although damaged from the battle at Side 2, the Ayug's Argama was sent to make contact with Axis. At about this time, the Titans realized the Ayug planned to gather allies, and they also planned to reach out to Axis. The Titans deployed the Dogos Gyar in Shirako. While en route, the Argama and the Dogos Gyar would encounter one another. Rather than try to outpace the larger ship, the Ayug planned to assault the Titan's ship and either drive it off or delay it long enough for them to make contact with Axis first. While the Titans would gain the upper hand in the battle, they did not expect the appearance of another force. Mobile suits deployed from Axis. Haman Karn, the de facto leader of Axis, would join the battle herself. These mobile suits would force the Titans' forces away from the area, allowing the Argama to approach Axis in safety. An AU delegation was sent to the battleship Axis had deployed. This delegation would be comprised of high level members of the AU, such as Quattro Bagina, Captain Bright, and the Anaheim Electronics representative Wong Lee. They would be introduced to Haman Karn and the young Mineva Zabi, who was presented as the leader of Axis. Unfortunately for the Ayug, negotiations would quickly break down as Quattro showed outrage at Haman for turning Mineva into a puppet for a new Zabi-style regime. The group would be arrested and placed under guard. With the negotiations over, the group would stage an escape, fighting their way out of the battleship and back to the Argama. Not long after the Ayug left the Axis ship, the Titans would launch an assault on the escaping Ayug forces. Although they were still able to escape, the Ayug would lose their chance to negotiate with the forces at Axis. Instead, Shiraka would make contact with Axis on behalf of the Titans, forming an alliance between the two groups. After securing this alliance, Shiraka began to pursue the retreating Ayug forces. I think it's important to look at this alliance. The Titans were originally formed in order to combat Xeon remnants. One would think that the Titans would be completely unwilling to ally with any Xeon forces. However, it betrays the true purpose of the Titans, gaining complete dominance over the Earth sphere. The Titans would use any means necessary to defeat the AU forces and consolidate their power. They were never assembled with the intention of protecting the Earth sphere, but instead as a means of growing Jamatov Hyman's power. Needing to strike against the Titans, the Ayug and Karaba planned a joint attack against the Titans' primary base at Kilimanjaro. The plan was to eliminate the source of Titans' leadership, including Jamatov himself. Karaba would launch an assault on the ground, while the Ayug forces aboard the Radish and the Argama lent orbital support. In response, the Titans moved to engage the Ayug forces in orbit, while the defenses on the ground fought back against the Karaba forces. While the Ayug and Karaba forces nearly took the base, in the end, the Titans would destroy it rather than let it fall into their hands. After Kilimanjaro, the Ayug and Karaba forces regrouped, planning to head to the seat of Federation power at Dakar. With a solid military victory against the Titans, the Ayug wanted to gain a political victory as well. They deployed their mobile suits to deliver Quattro just outside of Dakar. He would be brought to the Earth Federation assembly where he interrupted the televised meeting in progress. Quattro revealed himself as Shar Aznable, not only to the assembly, but all those watching the broadcast. 
He made a plea to the Earth Federation to act against the Titans and work against the endless wars perpetrated by groups like it. In the end, Shar pleaded for the people of Earth to move into space and join together in harmony. During his speech, the Titans and anti-Earth Federation forces would engage each other in the surrounding area. As Shar's speech continued, the Titans' fighting would cause damage to the Assembly Hall, endangering the members of the Assembly. The damage wouldn't be limited to the Assembly Hall either, with many of the buildings in the surrounding city damaged or destroyed. While the breakdown in negotiations with Axis would set back the AU, the victories at Kilimanjaro and Dakar would grant a renewed surge of support to the AU. The Titans were shown to be vulnerable, and many of their brutal tactics and lack of care for the Earth Federation were exposed. Their reckless attacks around the Assembly would further alienate the Earth Federation and the Titans. While both sides were still far from victory, the war was beginning to shift against the Titans. With the Aeug's advances, the Titans were growing more desperate. They mobilized their forces to pursue and destroy the Aeug forces leaving Dakar, including planning to use sleeper agents and additional cyber new types to confront the Aeug. In space, the Titans began to convert the Grips colony for another, more dangerous purpose. A massive laser system. They intended to reuse Xeon's solar ray weapon technology to establish dominance against their enemies. The Titans could feel a legitimate threat to their rule, and were willing to pull out all the stops to stay in power. Axis was securing its own place in the Earth sphere at this time. It's important to remember that while Axis was allied with the Titans, they were by no means loyal to them or the Earth Federation. Haman Karn was already plotting her split from the Titans, hoping to capitalize on the fighting between the Titans and the AU. With her forces aboard the asteroid Axis, she would be within easy striking distance once the Titans and AU had exhausted their forces battling one another. The Titans even faced threats from within, as there was a growing divide between those under Paptimus Shirako and those under Bascom and Jamatal Hyman. Shirako was gathering a small group of elite pilots and officers, planning to usurp control of the Titans and, by extension, the Earth Sphere. There were many players in the Earth Sphere at this time, and with the conflict coming to a head, it wouldn't be long before everyone would make their final act for control. It's interesting to note the differences between the Grips conflict and the One Year War. While the One Year War would be a major engagement between two large forces, that being the Earth Federation and Xeon, the Grips conflict is relatively small in scope. Typically only one or two major battles would be occurring at any given time with a small number of ships and personnel involved. However, with the multiple anti-Earth groups, the forces from Axis, and the split between the Titans, there's still a surprising number of people and events to keep track of. I think that's a good place to leave it for today. In our next class, we'll cover the final major battles of the Grips conflict, as well as discuss the fates of the Aeug, Titans, Axis, and the Earth as a whole. I'd recommend finishing Zeta Gundam, as we'll be covering the end of the series in our next class. I want to thank you all for joining us, and please, don't forget to study. The intro and outro music for this class is Labyrinth by Enrico Altavia, courtesy of freesoundtrackmusic.com.